Hello citizens of the world, we are anonymous. The aftermath of Friday, November 13, 2015. France is shocked by the events caused by terrorism in the capital. We first wish to express our sorrow and our solidarity with the victims, the injured, and their families. To defend our values and our freedom, we're tracking down members of the terrorist group responsible for these attacks. We will not give up, we will not forgive, and we'll do all that is necessary to end their actions. During the attacks of Charlie Hebdo, we had already expressed our determination to neutralize anyone who would attack our freedom. We'll be doing the same now, because of the recent attacks. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. January 17, 1961, President Eisenhower warned the public of the impending threat posed by a disastrous rise of misplaced power involving the military-industrial complex. Three months later, President John F. Kennedy would make an address before the American Newspaper Publishers Association, emphasizing the need for a free and independent press making it clear that censorship and the act of covering up mistakes is unacceptable, especially in what's supposed to be a free and open society. Nevertheless, over 53 years later, it's clear that while some circumstances have changed, the same warning is still very much in mind. The unfortunate and honest truth is that the very censorship and misplaced power the citizens were warned about 53 years ago, we're seeing occur today in the present. When the warnings of the past are ignored, history is doomed to repeat itself. We now face a dilemma unfamiliar to any previous human civilization, we face this dilemma not simply as a community, nor a nation, rather collectively as a planet. We have something no previous generation has ever had, the Internet. This year you are invited to stand against censorship and tyranny. Millions will unite around the globe on the 5th of November to make their voices heard and let the various governments of the world know that they'll never stop the free flow of information. The internet is one of the last truly free vessels that we the citizens have access to. We are anonymous, we are legion, we can forgive, though we shall never forget, expect us.
the Ku Klux Klan has approximately 150 active cells, operating in 41 states, with membership concentrated in both the South and the Midwest. The KKK is not what it once was but it does continue to survive in various locations throughout the United States. At its peak, membership was in the millions. Now, membership is likely less than 5,000. It is very important to understand, the KKK does not have a central unified leadership. Instead, they are split off into local cells or groups. We present you with this docs list, in this docs list, you will find official members of various KKK groups throughout the United States as well as their closest associates, most are also in other extremist hate groups. It is important to note that many clan members change clan affiliations as well as go back and forth between being clan members and neo-Nazis etc., sometimes both, if are permitted. There is quite a bit of movement between these types of groups, usually due to infighting. For this reason, you will see some names of individuals that are listed as neo-Nazis and so on. Some members of this list are quite dangerous sociopathic individuals. Others are not. Individuals on our list were also identified through open source intelligence strategies, as int. This is a broad array of information and sources that are generally available to the public. This includes, multimedia, academic records and public data. Members often told on themselves to us about their connections with the KKK during various chat conversations we had with clan members and affiliates throughout the course of our operation. You never know who you are talking to on the internet. Vocabulary Modern Communication PC Personal Computer Monitor or Screen Computer case or tower. Mouse. Mouse mat or mouse pad. Keyboard. Printer. Modem or router. Hard drive Laptop USB or memory stick CD-ROM CD player DVD drive Webcam Microphone Headset W, W, W The World Wide Web Connect Connection Server Useful verbs To browse or to surf 
to click on, to delete, to download or to upload, to drag, to install. To log in or log out. To print out. To save. To scroll. To share. To sign up. To type, to upgrade, web page, Website Homepage Do access or login Insert password Email Sender to Recipient Address at dot domain for example Annarita Piscini at libero dot et subject attach Attachment How to write formal email A formal email includes five parts. Each part is single-spaced. Between the parts, use double space. A formal letter begins with the heading. Heading includes formal name, Title, position, company name, and company address. Double space, salutation. Double space, body of the letter. Double space, closing. Remember, capital first letter, followed by comma. Double space. Signature. The signature includes your complete name, title, position, company, contact information if possible. Notice, in English, the signature is on the left not on the right. Send When writing a formal email, 
or a formal letter, remember that you need to be able to write a formal letter or email for a range of situations. For example, job application, requesting information about a course, complaining about bad service, making contact with a company. The characteristics of formal writing are standard phrases, formal vocabulary, longer sentences with linking words, passive structures, formal punctuation, how to write longer sentences and how to use linking words. In order to produce longer sentences, you should use linking words. You could use AND linkers, that is, all the linkers that add information. For example, in addition, furthermore, moreover, and so on. Ricorda che tutti i linkers si pongono ad inizio di nuovo paragrafo con la lettera iniziale maiuscola sempre seguiti da una virgola. You could also use but linkers. Although, sebbene, however, comunque, on the other hand, d'altra parte. Or you could use because linkers to give further explanation. For example, consequently, as a result. In a formal letter, it is very important to use the passive structures. For example, instead of saying somebody made a mistake with a reservation, active form, you could say a mistake was made with a reservation. Passive for. Remember that the passive structure is obtained in English by using the verb to be and the past participle. The passive structure is a more impersonal and formal structure than the active one. Moreover, in a formal letter, it is very important to use a formal punctuation. First of all, do not use contractions. I don't smoke. It's not correct. You should write, I do not smoke. They can't. Not correct. They cannot. We won't go. Not correct. You should write, we will not go there. And so on. Ricorda che la forma contratta è una questione di risparmio fonetico, nt, di articolazione, e quindi non ha motivo di esistere nella forma scritta. Remember to use commas after adverbs at the beginning of sentences. For example, additionally, Consequently, finally, however, and so on. Use commas in non-defining clauses. Use commas also before and or but, only if the subject of the sentence changes. For example, I would like to know when the course starts and how long it lasts. Different subject. He asked me to finish the report, but I had to leave early. Finally, very important, do not use exclamation marks or dashes in formal writing. Here are some other tips 
that you will find useful. The first important thing is choose the right email address. Unprofessional email addresses give a wrong impression of who you are now. Do not use not related to the email content. For example, in an application letter, do not use as email address bad boy. You can use it if you are writing to a friend, but it's not advisable if you are looking for a job. And finally, an unprofessional email address does not give key information to recognize you. On the contrary, a professional email address gives a correct impression of who you are now. Related to email content, for example, webdesigner at aol.com and gives key information about you. So, summing up, a good email address identifies you with key information, makes you unique from all other email addresses in a receiver's inbox, easy for you to be remembered by others, can be used for any professional purpose, does not include outdated ideas about you. So, for example, an email address like 1982 Sweet 16 Rock Music Fan is not good for a man who is no longer a teenager and is looking for a job. In a formal email, it is also very important to use capital letters in the correct way. Using old capital letters like this is rude because it is like shouting. Do not do this in any part of the email. Remember that acronyms such as NATO or USA use capital letters. The first letter of a sentence is always a capital letter. The first letter of proper nouns is always a capital letter as well. And finally, the pronoun I is always a capital letter too. The email should be as short as possible, as clear as possible, straight to the point, no beating around the bash. No flowery language. Use polite language. Use neutral language. Well, that's all. Good luck.